Hello, and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners and a principal analyst here at Futurum Research. And on behalf of my team here at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, More Insights' Patrick Moorhead sits down with President and CEO of Lattice Semiconductor, Jim Anderson. Their conversation covers major trends in the FPGA market and Lattice's approach to addressing their clients' needs. Let's hear what Jim has to say. We want to thank Accenture for sponsoring the semiconductor track of this year's 6-5 Summit. Hi, Jim. It's great to have you back for another 6-5 Summit. You become a staple on here, and the winners are the viewers because, man, over the last three years, uh, you are making FPGA sexy again. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Good to be with you as always. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, it's super. So um, we've seen FPGAs and the demand grow over the last couple of years yeah. uh, for various reasons. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm curious, I mean, you know, they say never ask a question. You don't have an inkling of the answer. I have an <laughs> idea, but I want to hear it in your words. How do you see this trend? Why is this happening? Yeah, we're really excited about the growth. We've certainly seen really strong growth, uh, especially the last uh, couple of years. Uh, Pat, I really think it comes down to a couple things uh, about FPGAs and uh, especially lattice FPGAs. Uh, number one is flexibility and number two is adaptability. And I think that's just really critical for our customers uh, right now. If you look at first one, flexibility, and, and I know you know this, Pat, because uh, you're talking to customers all the time as well, but um, the customer's ability to differentiate their system, to add unique capabilities, to make their system stand out in the market, I mean, that's paramount, right? And so the flexibility of an FPGA uh, fits perfectly into that because basically you're leveraging a standard uh, piece of silicon, but the customer uh, programs the FPGA for their unique capabilities, their unique features, their needs to differentiate their platform. And so that flexibility is incredibly important and can be a really key differentiator. And then the second one is adaptability because the customers know that they're gonna wanna change those features over time, right? And they may not know what they wanna change yet, but they know they're gonna to wanna to add new features, add new capabilities. And the fact that you can reprogram that FPGA, change it over time, adapt it, that provides great future-proofing for the customers. And so that's, I think, the other big reason that we're seeing this growth in FPGAs. And just to give you a, give you a sense of some of the markets that we serve, that we see this, uh, this growth is certainly in and communication systems, things like enterprise networking, uh, telecom, 5G wireless infrastructure, uh, computing systems, definitely, uh, servers that are going into hyperscale cloud data centers or enterprise data centers, client systems like, uh, like laptops and uh, uh, tablet devices, also industrial, industrial automation and robotics growing very, very strong. And this flexibility and adaptability really important in that market. Automotive electronics, and I could kind of go on and on on the applications. But I, again, I think it's really around that flexibility and adaptability. And, and let me give you one example usage model just so you get a sense of uh, why we're seeing the growth across a lot of those markets that I just mentioned. One of the common usage models now is uh, the customer is trying to add more intelligence, more decision making to their system. They're trying to make their system smarter right. um, and be able to adapt to its environment. And so invariably, what they're kind of talking about is adding artificial intelligence processing. Or if it's an edge device, they're talking about inference processing. That's really what they're trying to add. And the Lattice FPGA is just a great device to do inference processing. It maps, you can take your unique, if you're, you're the customer, you take your unique uh, AI inference algorithm and you map that directly onto the FPGA, you customize it for your system. And then you know that that uh, algorithm is gonna change over time, right? It may change every year, it may change every month. You may be adapting your AI algorithm every week. And so you want the ability to adapt and reprogram that device. And so again, Right. FPGA perfect solution for that. So that's kind of what we're seeing in the market. I think that's really fundamentally what's driving a lot of the growth. Jim, uh, there also used to be a time to market uh, advantage to for getting certain functions into your device. I spent 10 years on the system side and 11 years on the on the host processor side. And 
it, you know, there was this benefit with FPGAs that, that would get me to market, you know, a year before, let's say uh, an ASIC. Is that, is that still the case? Oh, definitely. That's definitely is still the case. That's a big advantage. And then one of the things we've done, Pat, to try to supercharge that is we've been pre-building these uh, application-specific software solution stacks. So we've been basically doing some of the software work that sits above our FPGA, some of the the programming of the FPGA, we've been pre-building that for our customers to actually make it even easier than in the past to design the products in quickly and help them get to market as fast as possible. Yeah, so it's very possible that somebody might choose uh, your FPGA over a uh, a controller or, or something like that, which is sometimes viewed as easier to program, but brings a lot lower power to the table. Yeah. So I, I think on power efficiency, I think you'll find that we're we're sort of a market leader on power efficiency. But again, the flexibility, adaptability, the FPG in combination with that software that we're bringing that's pre, pre-programmed, pre-built for the customer, that has really made it even easier than ever before to adopt lattice chips yeah. and get to market, help you get to market quickly. So uh, you talked about just a wide variety of markets you're, you're in and whether it's the PC space, uh, the server space, industrial, robotics, uh, yeah. automotive, uh, 5G base stations. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really broad. So how do, you, how do you have a unified strategy when it comes to that many different uh, end, end markets? What's the consistency in the strategy and the approach? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And I would call it, uh, we take a solution approach, right? So we take, because I was just mentioning software, right? It's not just about the chip that we're delivering, but it's about the entire solution. So we're always thinking about how do we deliver as complete a solution as possible to those customers across all those different usage models in those different markets. Um, so if I start, so there's a hardware piece of that, a chip piece of that, and then the software piece of that. If I First, I start at the at the hardware level. Our approach on the hardware has always been uh, to innovate around power efficiency, ease of use, small size, and we've been doing this for only almost forty years, right? In fact, yeah. next year will be our fortieth anniversary, <laughs> but it's really always been around those core tenets of innovating around uh, power efficiency, ease of use, et cetera. And I think that is, that's really served us well. That's why Lattice is actually the highest volume FPGA maker on the planet. Uh, we ship more FPGAs than anybody else and power. Let's just take one of those attributes, power efficiency. That's incredibly important to our customers. Uh, a lot of times when they're designing their systems, the total power budget of the system is kind of the primary design constraint. And so when we're able to bring much more power efficient solutions to our customers, that can be a big win. And if you look at our latest product generation, which is Nexus, uh, we brought out four different device families to date. That's our, our newest uh, platform that's ramping right now. And what f- customers find when they compare that to competitive devices is they're finding up to 4x better power efficiency. So not just like 10 or 20% better power efficiency, but four times better. And so that's a big deal to them. That allows them to make their system much more power efficient, much more capable. And so that gives you a sense of how we're innovating at the hardware level. And then again, going back to total solution approach uh, at the software level, what we've been doing is building out a portfolio of what we call application specific software solution stacks. And these are pre-built software tools, libraries, reference designs that do a bunch of the work for our customers already and that are are designed for specific applications or usage models. And first one we brought out was uh, our artificial intelligence software stack. Then we brought out a computer vision software stack, a platform security software stack. Our most recent one is around industrial automation and robotics where we're seeing just tremendous growth. And then the one that we're bringing out this quarter is around 5G ORAN, so open RAN for 5G wireless networks. So so all of the software solution stacks are designed around making it really easy for customers to get to market quickly. And also, by the way, it makes it really easy for them to switch from a competitor's device, either a competitor's FPGA or a competitor's microcontroller, switch over to a lattice device, makes that switching very, very easy. So that's really the approach we're taking, that total solution hardware software approach. So first off, um, I'm sure I've been briefed on this, but application specific software stack? Yes. 
<laughs> and it, it's just so close to application specific integrated circuit. I can't stand it. <laughs> no, no, I know. I, I, I seriously love it. And listen, um, the reputation that FPGA has had where, listen, they're great, but um, they're hard to program. And um, when I get to, you know, let's say uh, generation or down or the standard gets locked in, I'm just going to, I'm going to put an ASIC in there. And I, what, how, I've seen so many products that they don't move from yeah. a lattice FPGA to an ASIC, but in other markets, I, I see that, I see that a lot. Why, why, why is that? Yeah. With, with most of our customers now today, we very rarely see them switch from a lattice device to a custom chip, like an ASIC, a purely custom chip. Um, and the reason that they, they generally aren't switching is because, again, it goes back to those two things I talked about at the very beginning, the flexibility and the adaptability. They're really designing the FPGA in for all the benefits we've already talked about. But again, the ability to custom to, to leverage a, a standard product FPGA, but to customize it for their unique capabilities in their system. And again, that adaptability over time, that's a big deal. Because if it, let's take industrial, for example. Let's say you're building an industrial robot, right? And a lot of times these systems last for you know five, seven years, maybe ten years. They'll produce yeah. this industrial robot. Well, they're not going to. They can't redesign the hardware multiple times over that ten ten year um, platform. But they can reprogram the FPGA. So as they want to tweak the system, add new features, add new capabilities, they just reprogram the FPGA. You can't do that with an ASIC, right? Um, and so there's a lot of benefits just inherent in FPGAs that make it a really good solution. I get it, Jim. You know, I, I think I ask you that every other time. I think you uh, do too. <laughs> that, that, that we talk, but I keep saying, you know, hey, this FPGA was was uh, replaced by an ASIC, and and I know there are situations where maybe that makes sense, but you you've obviously put some magic in there that uh, keeps that happening uh, to you a lot. So let me get the value prop just down to a fine a fine point here. So. Uh, what I'm hearing, Lattice excels because of over other FPGAs versus other types of silicon because of low power. Is there is is by the way super important? Are there other elements where are you more flexible or more adaptable than than the other FPGA makers? Yeah, and I think it, the, so. The answer is yes, and it's really the, the combination of that hardware software. We're really the only FPGA company out there that's doing that unique combination of a hardware software that total solution uh, approach. And I think that provides us with a level of flexibility, but also ease of use that is uh, better than anybody else out there in the market, and is super important to our customers. And there's other benefits of at the same time we're delivering you know, four times better power efficiency. We're delivering higher performance than our customers, higher reliability in some cases, um, up to 100X uh, higher reliability. Uh, we're a very high volume maker of FPGAs. So quality and reliability are absolutely important to us. We've really driven high levels of reliability and quality. And so there's a number of other factors as well, but uh, yeah, we feel pretty good about the competitive differentiation. I would, I think if you asked our customers, they would say the same thing. The customers are pretty excited about the portfolio that we've got today, but then also really excited about the roadmap in front of us as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest differences that I've seen uh, when I look at the market is you actually have new designs. <laughs> okay, go, going into um, the lowest power area, but now, you know, with with uh, your announcement that you made on hitting the mid range, you're yeah. now bringing new design to the mid range. And as weird as it might sound, that's a novel thing uh, in, uh, in 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 your industry, because given, you know, quite frankly, the uh, the two other biggest players in the market, they uh, they they you know, got sucked into uh, bigger companies and they're really interested in, in, in being part of kind of a super SOC uh, in, in a way. So yeah. I think the future looks good to it. I, I do want to reflect back now. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, uh, you've been at, at Lattice for four years now. Um, and I mean, the company, it is black and white. I think the first analysis that I wrote uh, about you and, and the company was that you your investor day uh, in, in in New York. I mean, it's changed financially uh, and strategically. Uh, what has changed over the past four years, and where do you want to to take the company and its growth from from here? 
Yeah, definitely. By the way, I can't believe it's already been almost four years that uh, I think I've aged a lot more than four <laughs> years over the last four years, but I don't know, maybe we all have actually, but, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, we're pretty proud of the progress that we made to date, but we're, we're way more excited about where we're headed from here. And what the way we talk about it internally is right now we're kind of in what we call phase two of the company. And in the second half of this year, we begin phase three of the company. And, and let me kind of step back and explain. Um, if you look at the first couple of years, so I joined in uh, Q3 of 2018, uh, a whole new management team joined uh, in kind of late 2018. And kind of phase one was the first couple of years where I, I really call that the rebuilding phase. We were really rebuilding the company, especially rebuilding the product roadmap, the product portfolio, the product company, or the product roadmap. Because, you know, if you think about it, the, 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 at the end of the day, the lifeblood of the company is our products, right? So we totally rebuilt the product portfolio and roadmap, and then also rebuilt customer support and all the other operational activities of the company. So that, that was really the first couple of years. And then we entered the second phase of the company, which we call the accelerated growth uh, phase of the company. And that's where all that good work that we had done on the product roadmap starts to um, come to fruition in terms of the new products that are coming out. So in this kind of second phase, if you look at the last couple of years, the number of new products that we've brought out versus say five or six years ago, what the company was bringing out, it's three times more products. We're, we've tripled the rate of new products that we're bringing to market versus five or six years ago. That's a that's a big increase with essentially about the same amount of resources are R&D. And so we've really rebuilt the product portfolio in this kind of second phase. And we're now seeing accelerated growth. Uh, if you look at our most recent quarter, we grew 30% year over year. And so that's really uh, on the back of the benefits of rebuilding that we did on those that kind of first uh, couple years and uh, so we're really you know, excited about this second phase of accelerated growth. Um, the customer momentum is fantastic right now. And I believe that if you look at, if you step back and look at the products that we have today, it's the strongest product portfolio and strongest roadmap that we've ever had in the company's almost 40 year history, hands down. And so, and our customers see that as well. But what we're really excited about is uh, the uh, second half of this year, we start phase three of the company, which is now um, expansion beyond uh, the market, the portion of the market that we've traditionally uh, served. And that's with our new Avant platforms. We'll launch our new Avant FPGA platform second half of this year. Uh, it increases the capacity or capabilities of our devices by 5X. So 5X more capability capacity dramatically expands the product line, doubles our addressable market. And uh, this is something that our customers have been asking us for since basically almost the beginning of when I joined the company in, in that first year. They started asking us to build this product back in 2019. And so the customers are excited about it. And the target, the target customers for this uh, new product line, Avant, 90% of them are already customers of Lattice today. So they're already customers that are using our Nexus devices or pre-Nexus devices or customers that know and love us already. And uh, basically what we're doing is taking a, a much wider product portfolio to them. And by the way, that new product portfolio leverages the software that they're already using today as well. So the software transition is easy. So that's the third phase, this expansion phase that we're entering really in the second half of this year. That's why the company's really excited right now to get into this next phase of expansion for the company. And I know, Pat, you and I have known each other for a long time. I'm sure, you know, as you can imagine, there might be a phase four and a phase five and some longer term plans that we've got as well, which obviously I'll be happy to share when we get closer to that. But uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about the progress we've made in the first couple phases, but, but super excited about this next phase of the company. Yeah, Jim, it's it's been fun to watch uh, the company and where it started when you took leadership uh, and where it is today. But, you know, at, even more exciting is 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 where uh, it's going. I mean, this is hard stuff. OK, and anybody who's been part of this, if you haven't been part of this, it's hard to empathize with how hard it is. Uh, but it is, you know, I've been on a couple of roller coasters myself. I didn't run the entire company, but I was either running product lines or, or, or something different. And it, it takes a lot out of you. I mean, 
How do you and the executive team keep up this pace? Well, I think that one of the things that uh, really helped is that leadership team that we added in really in the first six months after I joined the company. If you look at that leadership team, these are really deep industry experts, right? Um, the, the four people that lead our four operational groups like sales and marketing and engineering and supply chain, all of those leaders have decades of experience in the industry. So they've done this before. They've, they know how to, to drive product growth. They know how to execute. And so I think that's been a big help. Uh, and, but also the entire company is kind of behind this, right? Everybody's really excited about this. And we've been growing and adding uh, quite a bit as well. Over those last four years, we've significantly expanded our resources and investment in the product line. And so I think, you know, uh, the combination of having kind of the right leaders, the right investment, the expanding, growing investment, I think it puts us on a really good uh, path towards, you know, continuing to execute really well on our vision. Is there a North Star that, that you know, uh, drives this? I mean, one singular thing that's just like okay this is this is moving us forward because this oh, seems, yes. yeah I, jim i mean most turnarounds or attempts at turnarounds don't actually end up working <laughs> <laughs> geez bad come on give me a little bit more confidence no <laughs> no no i'm just saying i have confidence in you but i i've looked at others but it's and that's why i'm asking i mean there's a lot of people who are are watching who are just like like how do they do this how can I replicate this uh, in the industry? And, and I know it's it's a, a, a convolution of many things, but is there a North Star that, that kind of took you and the team in a certain direction four years ago? Yeah, absolutely. The North Star is always our uh, customer, right? That's always what everything that we do day in, day out is for the customer at the end of the day. But underneath that is the fundamental North Star is the products, right? We're a product company. And the the entire lifeblood of the company is about the products that we build. And so our focus day in and day out is to bring the absolute best products, both hardware and software to our customers and to bring that to them as fast as possible, as reliably as possible, and just to do that day in and day out. So we believe that ultimately we've got to bring great products to the market and have just fantastic support for our customers. That's our fundamental North Star. Jim, that's not the first time I've heard you say that. In fact, uh, at another company, I think I heard <laughs> the same thing. So maybe I always really? had the answer, always had the answer there. But, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm biased. I'm a product person myself. I love technology and I, I, I love to watch this. But Jim, hey, thank you so much for sharing not only the benefits of uh, FPGAs holistically and, and market wide, but also explaining to people um, how you're optimizing and doing FPGAs differently uh, for the benefit uh, of your customers, you know, first focusing on the lowest power, uh, having uh, these application specific um, software stacks. So it limits, uh, reduces their time to market, uh, allows them to have common functionality across platforms, regardless of the uh, of the host CPU. And, and finally, hope it gives you some inspiration to other leaders out there who are maybe in the midst uh, about to, to, to get in a, a turnaround or, or halfway through and it's like really hard uh, and get some inspiration out of, uh, of what you and the leadership team uh, have done. Well, thanks, Pat. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the time today. And we still feel like we're early on our journey, right? <laughs> We've got a long ways to go uh, in terms of unlocking the total potential of Lattice. So we're still early on our journey, but excited to head down the path. And of course, excited to enter that next phase in the second half of this year, uh, you know, our phase three around Devant. And I'm sure you and I will talk more about that as we get closer to that launch. Oh, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it, Jim. Thanks again. Thanks, Pat.